I'm Dustin Harder, and this is Keep On Cooking. Hello and welcome to Keep On Cooking, the only podcast dedicated to plant-based cookbooks. I'm your host, Dustin Harder, and it's just me this week. Um, thanks for joining me. It's a rainy Sunday morning, afternoon, I guess, because we had the time change, so I'm an hour ahead. I feel like I lost all my sleep. Um, and I'm just chilling, going over this book, Vegan on the Cheap by Robin Robertson. I wanted to do this book uh, because this is one of the first books that I ever had when uh, I went vegan, I, I think like 13 years ago. Um, so it, it, it holds a little special place for me. But uh, you can check out more about Robin Robertson's history in episode 53, where I go over her book, The Plant-Based Slow Cooker. Um, another fantastic book by Robin Robertson. And we're just going to continue on with the genius that is Robin uh, and chat through this book, Vegan on the Cheap, Great Recipes and Simple strat Strategies that Save You Time and Money. Penny. Uh, so yeah, I got the book probably, geez, around 2011, 2012, and it came out in 2010. And um, for the reason that it says, vegan on the cheap, I was like, how can I keep this cheap? You know, there is that, I think it's just a huge misconception that eating vegan is expensive. Um, because when it gets down to the root of it, we're looking at whole plant-based foods. And if you're really doing uh, a decent job in the market there, shopping and everything, you're not buying a lot of specialty items or a lot of processed foods. Um, whole foods can be pretty inexpensive. You buy things like, you know, like legumes and rice and all that. You buy that in bulk. That can get really inexpensive quickly. Um, and if you're just uh, keeping your eye on the produce there, uh, get stuff that's fresh and use it up. You're saving money in the long run. So it's great. Or you can get frozen uh, fruit, frozen vegetables as well. That saves a lot of money. You don't have to worry about it going bad. So anyways, but it's not about me giving tips and tricks to keep it inexpensive. Uh, we also just had Tony Okamoto on. She had her new book, Plant-Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy, come out. So that's another one to check out for uh, easy ways to keep everything budget-friendly. Let me take a sip of my coffee here still waking up. You know what I'm saying? All right. So you don't have to blow your budget to eat great meatless and dairy-free meals every day. With Vegan on the Cheap, you can enjoy delicious vegan meals every day of the week. Veteran food writer and vegan authority Robin Robertson provides 150 mouthwatering, exciting recipes that cost just 50 cents to $2 per serving. Those are Hefty savings to go with hearty vegan meals, essentially. And this book presents great options for savory soups and stews, satisfying salads, hearty noodle dishes, first-class casseroles, favorites for the slow cooker, and meatless and dairy-free recipes for classics like pizza, burgers, sandwiches. Throughout the book, Robin uh, peppers smart tips and creative ideas to help you save money by cooking in bulk prepping meals in advance and finding tasty ways to reuse leftovers. And uh, like I said, this is 150 recipes. And what I love about it too, if you're watching, it's not the um, standard, like sort of what's a standard book, like eight by 11, maybe that's too big. It's a little smaller. And I just kind of love that. It makes it feel like a little pocketbook to me. It's, it's bigger than a pocketbook, but it's one of the things I like about it is the size of it. Um, and I've had now two copies of this. Um, I wore one out. I had post-its in it everywhere i made the there's two different kinds of meatloaf you can make in this i used to make one of them all the time i think it's the three bean loaf um and one of the things i love about this book and i'll probably say it over again you can like find something if you're like oh my gosh i don't know what to eat tonight and it's been a long day i just want something quick you can pretty much look in here and you'll have like stuff in your pantry to like make something happen from here which i love so uh one of the many great things about it of course in the beginning of the book she goes over the big picture of uh you know keeping things on the cheap, vegan on the cheap. She's got a little list here. You avoid processed ingredients. You make your own meat alternatives at a fraction of the cost of commercial products, which is true. You save time with menu planning, grocery shopping, and meal preparation. She's got lots of tips in here for menu planning. She's got different stuff laid out in here. Grocery shopping as well, grocery list and meal preparation. Uh, freeze a stockpile of prepared ingredients for the weeks ahead with the big batch concept, uh, which is batch cooking, of course. Uh, enjoy one pot cleanup and day off cooking with two for one meals. We'll have to see what the two for one meals are. I hope she goes over that in the beginning here. Um, but I love a one pot cleanup. Put everything in that one pot, make it, dish it out for dinner. And all you got to clean is that one pot. I love it. And probably a cutting board. Let's be honest if we're being real here, but still, still. 
Uh, splurge a little with simple additions and substitutions. She's got a little note for that. And figure out your food budgets and cost per servings with no recipe costing more than $2 per serving. And I will say, I believe she does in here. She does. So on every recipe, which... So there's a big flaw for me in budget-friendly books and protein, uh, vegan protein books. And that is the vegan protein books, all of them that I've found, and there's several out there and I've looked at several, they do not list the actual macros. So they say it's this vegan protein book. You're going to be able to get your protein and here's how you do it and here's all these recipes. But I'm like, well, if you're telling me, like if it's a macronutrient I'm trying to keep track of or I'm getting the book to see what I'm getting. I want to see how much protein is actually in that recipe. So that is a complaint of mine about vegan protein books. Not going to shout out any names, but there's a few out there. I, I just don't understand not including that in a specific book, right? Like in a protein book, why wouldn't have that? But also uh, vegan budget-friendly books. What I love about this one is that it's got, which is not also, this takes me back to my original point. This has the amount per serving on every recipe. So I just opened it up to Asian noodle soup, and it's $1.50 or less per serving, it says. Uh, close to mom's sausage patties, uh, less than 50 cents per serving. Vegan sour cream, less than 50 cents per serving. Um, marinara sauce, a dollar uh, or less per serving. So I just think, and of course, it's a roundabout idea, right? Like, I mean, this book was written 13, 14 years ago. So things are going to change a little bit, but like, it's nice to get a look. You can look at something and at least get like the base of it a little bit and be like, oh, well, that only cost X, Y, Z. Sure, it might be a tiny bit more now, but it's not going to be, you know, it's a difference between like a, a few cents as opposed to like, oh, it was a dollar. Now it's going to be five dollars. So who knows the way things are these days? My goodness. Um, OK, so. The big picture, she takes us into it even further, how a vegan diet can save you money, grocery bills, medical bills, because you're eating a well-balanced diet, uh, diet. So the hope is that you're healthier. Taking a sip of coffee. When I don't have anyone else to talk, I can't just easily take a sip of coffee. Um, reduce medical bills because the idea is that you're eating healthier. So you don't have, you're not as sick or going and to the hospital. You don't need to have those medical bills. Dining out, you're dining out less because you're planning with your meal planning here. So you're not spending money on eating out, which I don't know where you are, but every time I go out to eat, we're dropping like a hundred dollars and it's not, even if we're not getting crazy, it seems like, and I don't even drink. So that's not even having drinks on the menu. Isn't that crazy? I'd say like 60 to a hundred. I shouldn't say it's always a hundred, but I feel like we're always dropping uh, a decent amount of money. And then I look at that when that happens and I'm like, Oh my God, I could have eaten for days on this amount. You know, and we actually don't go out to eat anymore because I'm cooking all the time. Uh, tips for saving money and time. So you got meal planning tips, strategy, planned leftovers, um, Stick to staples, incorporate family favorites, be a thrifty cook, cut down on waste in other ways, she says. Uh, include more soups and stews. What's more soothing than the bowl of super stew? Their virtues are many, from being easy and versatile to making uh, to make to being adaptable and forgiving, not to mention that they are the ultimate dollar stretcher, and she's not wrong. I love taking things from my fridge on a Sunday and making a super stew. And then it lasts me till like Wednesday. I've got, it's just amazing. Great way to use up produce, I think. Uh, jazz up rice and beans. So she talks about just, you know, adding different things to rice and beans and inexpensive ingredients and uh, jazzing them up a little bit. Keep your kitchen well stocked. So to make, to help make a feast out of simple ingredients, keep your pantry stocked with a variety of non-perishables such as canned tomatoes, canned beans, and pasta, as well as grains, nuts, and seasonings. Keep frozen veggies on hand for those times when you run out of fresh veggies, and that will save you a trip to the store. All great tips, Robin. Um, pantry raid recipes. I love this because it's kind of just what I was talking about, about me making my Sunday soup. Keep a few easy pantry-based recipes handy on the fridge or in a kitchen drawer or taped into the inside of a pantry door to remind you of simple, easy meals that you can enjoy and put together quickly. This will save you last-minute panics when you're starved and don't know what to cook. If you have a box of pasta and a can of beans in the pantry, you're within 20 minutes of a satisfying meal that can save you from the expense of dialing for takeout. That is so true. That's so true. Some of her favorites, she says, are ziti with green olives white beans and oven dried tomatoes, uh, escarole white beans and almost instant chickpea tomato soup. Mm, sounds delicious. I will say about this book too. I think this, where it comes into the size of it that I mentioned earlier, it reminds me. So all of these recipes are kind of like 
they feel like recipes my mom would have made when I was a kid, which I think is one of the things I love about the book. But it also feels like little recipe cards because of that to me. Like, I feel like this book is like a little box of recipe cards. And I love it because of that. I just think it's so cool. Uh, grocery shopping tips. Make a grocery list when you shop. Shop once per, per week. Shop seasonally. Grocery shopping uh look for sales and stock up buy in bulk within reason make sure you're going to use it uh, basically um so many great tips on here on how to keep your shopping aligned to uh keep your budget where you want it to be basically uh fruit prep preparation tips here she mentions that uh big batch cooking once a week prepare large amounts of food few of a few basic foods, then portion and freeze them for later use. Choose items that can be used throughout the week or portioned and frozen, such as a big pot of brown rice, beans, pasta, or vegetable stock. Uh, make your own. So good. One pot meals. Great. Two for one freezer meals. So let's see what this is. Make double amounts of a specific meal, such as stews, chili, casseroles, and burgers, and freeze half. That's fantastic. That's such a great tip. That really, really is. Um, I'll often make something today. I have to recipe test a pasta actually when I get off of this. Oh, and a stew. So I got to do two different things. So I will recipe test it and I'll probably have one for lunch and one for dinner, but then I'm going to portion them out into meal plans for the rest of the week so that I've got everything portioned out. And if it's too much, I will freeze some of it. So then I've got portions for later, but it is great to portion it out. So like if you put something in the freezer, you can literally just pull it out and um, heat up the one portion. That's great. Oh, yeah. She goes on to say, freeze it. Don't waste it. Recipes often call on a small amount of an ingredient that is available only in large amounts, such as canned chipotle chilies, tomato paste, or coconut milk. Rather than put the leftovers in the refrigerator in hopes of using them up within a few days, it's best to freeze what you don't use to be sure it doesn't go to waste. And I'm sure you guys have seen on Instagram, because I've done it a bunch of times on Instagram, and um, I know other people have as well. Like I take my tomato paste now. I've done it in two different ways. I'll take my tomato paste and I'll spoon it out into tablespoons in like a flat Tupperware container and freeze it. Or I will now put it in a Ziploc bag, flatten it out and use just like a dough cutter to like cut portions into tablespoon sizes so I can pull that tomato paste whenever I need it because that tomato paste gets you every time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make your own convenience food from salad dressings to seitan. There are a number of ways to save money when you start making your own convenience items. Uh, next chapter, which is the first chapter, basics chapter is filled with these kinds of recipes like vegetable stop, make your own mayo and big stick pepperoni. I'm curious about that one. I just made a pepperoni from the herbivorous butcher cookbook the other day. That was delicious. I would love to see this one. That's exciting. Um, brown bag it, pack your lunch, dessert on a budget. Dessert doesn't have to be expensive to be delicious. Um, one way to compromise is to use a limited amount of the more expensive ingredients. You have a taste of the good life without breaking the bank. For example, use toasted nuts or chocolate to garnish a dessert. Stretch a pint of vegan ice cream, which is notoriously expensive. It's gotten a little better, but I hear you. Um, but gosh, if she wrote this in 2009, released in 2010, think of what vegan ice cream was even available then. I think so delicious. And I feel like that was it. There's so much vegan ice cream on the market these days. It's crazy. Um, but you, she says to stretch a pint of ice cream by turning it into an ice cream cake with peanut butter, chocolate, or fruit. Girl. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Make your kitchen a no waste zone. Um, and to do that, she says, keep passing them over. Let's see. We already talked about saving vegetable scraps and bits of vegetables uh, for stock. But what about leftover cooked veggies from dinner or a few stray berries or a single apple that never seems to get eaten? If you keep passing them over, they'll eventually reach the point of no return and you'll have to toss them. That's like putting cash in the trash. Wow. When you put it like that, Robin, she's not wrong. That is like putting cash in the trash. Instead, be diligent in using them up as soon as you can. Add leftover cooked veggies to salads or put them in the bottom of your soup bowls or pour servings of hot soup over them. The soup will heat them. If you can't uh, convince someone in your family to simply eat whatever fruit happens to be languishing on the counter, then incorporate it into dinner. I love that. Sliced apple or pear makes a great addition to a salad. I was just thinking that as she said apple. Um, or you combine your pear or apple with other uh, wallflower fruits, such as grapes, berries, and banana, for example, and you'll have a nice fruit salad. So true. I love it. Time is money. Strike a balance. Um, she says, dining out when money is tight, going out to eat may seem like a luxury you can't afford. Still, there may be times when you 
want to get out of the house or must eat out because of traveling and so on. Here are some tips for dining out economically. I love this. So dressing up and cheaping out. <laughs> that sounds like a wild Saturday night to me. Dressing up and cheaping out. Search for specials such as prefix menus. Uh, before theater menus and early bird specials. Very good. Look for restaurants that offer two for one entrees. All you can eat salad bars are always a bargain. Go out just for drinks and appetizers. Skip the drinks. Have them at home. Go out for lunch instead of dinner. Share an entree. After dinner out, have dessert and coffee at home. Have dessert out at, and dinner in. Um, I want to say about this. Coffee at dinner, I don't get it. I'm not having coffee at night. I'm not having decaf either because that's some BS. I'm just saying. This is like an old school thing. Coffee after dinner and I don't get it. Um, but I'm glad she gives the the wreck in here to go home and have coffee at home after dinner. If you're someone who still has coffee after dinner, I just don't get that concept. Um, because it goes well with dessert? Is that what it is? Maybe. I will say, too, on the Sharon entree here, listen, whatever you're getting at a restaurant, it's too big for you to be eaten. The portion is either double or triple the size what an actual portion is supposed to be. So splitting an entree with someone or getting half to go immediately is an excellent way not only to save, save money and be budget friendly, but watch that those uh, that calorie intake, too, because my goodness, I mean, if it's something you're watching, I'll eat the whole plate. I don't care. But um really restaurants are piling up because they want you to feel like you're getting your money's worth you know well this is just great lots of different uh guidelines in here um eat right and eating well about the recipes ingredient substitutions cost consciousness uh cheapskate breakfast ideas let's hear some cheapskate Breakfast ideas. Vegan breakfast is by nature relatively inexpensive, but here are some tips to make sure your breakfast is truly on the cheap. Don't skip breakfast. A bowl of hot oatmeal, for example, can provide energy for your day and help you uh, avoid expensive pitfall pitfalls such as stopping for a coffee and bagel on the way to work. That's so true. Bring your own coffee, smoothie, or juice when going to avoid a big uh, bucks at a coffee shop. You know, I like me a little coffee out now and then. I uh, In New York, when I lived there, I probably had a coffee out every day, though, so I can certainly appreciate this. But one of my things was I couldn't stand carrying my coffee. Like, if I made it from home, I couldn't stand carrying it on the train. That's just me. I can be a little weird like that, though. I got little specifics, you know, little quirky specifics that are just uh, unique to me because I'm a butterfly. And no butterfly, no one butterfly is the same. Um if you're not a breakfast person or need something quick and easy, try a slice of toast with peanut butter or banana smoothie. If you need something portable, bring along a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a bag of trail mix. Have breakfast for dinner. Serving breakfast foods such as pancakes or tofu scramble with fried potatoes and toast for dinner is both easy and economical. It's also a nice change from usual dinner menus. I love pancakes for dinner. I love it. She's got an amazing cost comparison chart here of if you buy salsa in the store, you make it on your own. Uh, marinara sauce in the store, if you make it on your own. Mayonnaise in the store, if you make it on your own. All sorts of stuff. Chutney, peanut sauce, canned beans, whole grain bread. Uh, five favorite dishes, two ways. So she lists different dishes here and uh, variations on ways to make them. And she also gives you the price point of how much they come out per serving. That's amazing. I mean, what a nice, uh, very thorough sort of list there to give you a comparison rate to see it. And the, I think the comparison here on making a dish two ways is so that you can see which one is less expensive, which is great. Um, she's got menu ideas in here as well. She takes you through a whole week of menu offerings, which I love. She's got grocery shopping list in here. Come on now with the grocery shopping list. I love this. In these days, you can take a picture with your phone and just take take it to market. Um, so, so great. Look at that. Just so good. Okay. Well, let's move into some recipes, shall we? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we've got our cooking basics chapter. This has so many wonderful things in it. So you got mushroom gravy, marinara sauce, oven dried tomatoes, salsa in season, uh, cheap mole. Come on. Cheesy sauce, tofita, tofu feta, faux parm, Cheap steak chutney, easy peanut sauce, make your own mayo, vegan sour cream, house salad dressing, handy hummus, vegetable stock, a pot of beans, rice two ways, three grain bread, simple simmered seitan. I've made this seitan simple to make, like it says, and so easy, so delicious. And I had it on hand to like put it in stews and other stuff I wanted. I loved it. Um, I used to make that. That's This is probably the first seitan I ever made now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, cutlets on the cheap, close to mom's sausage patties, big stick pepperoni. Wheat balls, smoky tempeh bits, and double pie crust. So let me look at this. I'm curious about the, the pepperoni here. So we got 56. 
Big Stick Pepperoni. She says, this is a vegan version of the Big Stick Pepperoni my mother used to buy when I was a kid. Use this tasty and versatile faux pepperoni in soup sandwiches, salads, pilafs, pasta dishes, and of course, as pizza topping. Flavorful, protein-rich, and easy to make. It costs a small fraction of commercial vegan pepperoni products. Liquid smoke is a season seasoning liquid available in supermarkets that adds a smoky flavor to foods. Liquid uh, smoke, too, I couldn't find for the longest time. And now I see, I literally see it everywhere. It's usually where you would find, like, Worcestershire. And I usually have pretty good luck finding vegan Worcestershire in, like, the standard market these days as well. Um, this is 50 cents uh, per serving. Makes about a pound, it says. It's got vital wheat gluten, nutritional yeast, tapioca flour, a bunch of different spices. Um, only a little bit of olive oil, so I like to see that it's low on the olive oil, too. Well, this is great. I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm putting a little, folding that page over. What do you call that? A dog mark, an ear mark? A, what is that? Dog, dog ear? Dog eared page, right? I think so. No one's here to tell me all by myself. Um, and the other one I wanted to look at, cheap amole. So David loves a good mole sauce. Let me look in this and see here. Avocados are notoriously expensive, she says. So I've been searching for a way to have a guacamole. And a... I thought this was going to be a mole sauce. This is an, uh, 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 guacamole. So she's been searching for a cheaper way to have my guacamole and afford it, too. After much trial and error, I've come up with this green pea and white bean dip that looks and tastes remarkably like the real deal. As a bonus to being cheaper than regular guacamole, this version also, also contains less fat and more protein. So she's got uh, frozen peas in here, white beans, green chilies, and then some spices. I'm very curious about this. Look at that. You food process it up. I mean, I'm very curious about that. I'm going to make that today. I think I got the stuff for it. And I got some chips. I'm going to have me some cheaper mole, some cheaper mole. And then we're going to move on to the next chapter, which is soups and stew save. Now, listen, 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 listen. sip of coffee. Hold on. I love me some soups and stews. Like, can't get enough. Can't get enough, I, especially a soup with some potato in it, cooked nice and tender. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's always just so hearty and satiating and so easy to make. You just put everything on a pot on the stove, you let it simmer, and voila, you got meals for days. So inexpensive, so yummy, so hearty, so delicious, so filling, so versatile. You can do anything you want with it. So, in the soup and stew savvy chapter, We've got red bean gazpacho anytime, almost instant chickpea tomato soup, pasta e fagioli, mom's bread and cabbage soup, minestrone soup with tiny meatballs. I love that. I love a little minestrone soup with a tiny meatball. Uh, Southwestern black bean and corn chowder, summer garden soup, Asian noodle soup, peanutty pumpkin stew. Oh, we're going to look at that one. Vegetable lentil stew, call it cassoulet, southern New Year's stew, sweet potato succotash stew, Black and white bean chili, French lentil chili, and Cincinnati suburb chili. Okay. Now, this is the second time in one of her books, because if you go back to the slow cooker book, she had a New Year's stew in there. And I don't know what this means. I, I don't, in my growing up, I never had, there was never like a New Year's. I remember in my early 20s, I tried to claim like this cash, this hash brown casserole. Actually, it's in my Epic Vegan Quick and Easy book as like a, New Year, it was going to be the traditional New Year's New Year's Day food, mainly because it was a great hangover food. It was like these cheesy potatoes, um, but it never, excuse me, never stuck because it also does not lend itself well to if you if you have like food resolutions and you're like I'm going to eat great in the New Year. I'm like, well, here's this like oily, cheesy, potatoey casserole here. Um, with potato chips on top at that delicious do not get me wrong but i'm like doesn't really fit into like new year new you fitness goals for those that do that um i've decided by the way because we just turned 42 and i look at my birthday as sort of new year's right and i don't do new year's resolutions i'm not mad at people who do it's fine it's all good i just find for me I, that's like a lot of pressure going into a new year but I've decided now what my new thing's going to be is every year on my birthday, I'm going to think of something that doesn't serve me, that in, in the year leading up to my new birthday, that didn't serve me, and that's something I'm going to um, shed, essentially. And this year, I said I was going to let go more. Like, I tend to hang on to things that 
um, I just let things get to me. I'll think about something like an interaction with somebody where I'm like, oh, was I awkward? Was I strange? Whatever. And it's like, whatever. Like, we're all just on this earth. We all have great moments, bad moments, whatever. Um, but also, like, I don't need to hang on to it. Just let it go. Um, so that's what I'm shedding in my uh, New Year is hanging on to things. I just had an instance the other night where I met somebody and a couple days after I was, I was like, was that interaction strange? And I was like, let it go. Let it go. So that's where I'm at. If you wanted a little, little something, something. Look, that New Year's stew just triggered all these feelings. Okay. So I wanted to look at that peanutty pumpkin stew. It's $1.50 per serving. She says, you can stretch this delicious and versatile stew further by serving it over cooked rice or quinoa. Ooh, and that's very hearty too. A small amount of curry and chilies add distinct flavor notes without being overpowering. However, for a more child-friendly version, you can leave them out. I love the sound of this already. It's got potato, carrot, onion, crushed tomatoes, solid, solid, says canned solid pack pumpkin. I don't know what that is. I'm going to say it's pumpkin puree. That's what I would be using if I if I made the recipe. Do you hear how like simple these ingredients are, though? I mean, really stuff that you probably have on hand. I love this so much. It's got beans in here. It's got vegetable stock. Um, it's got frozen peas, peanut butter. Uh, it says hot or mild curry powder. So you may be someone who has that uh, spice in your house, and you might not. I do, and now I really want to make this. I mean, that's the thing. Every time I go through this book, like I want to make everything because, first of all, it's so easy. And then second of all, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I actually have that in the house. So that's the pumpkin stew. Let's get back to the New Year's stew. So it says Southern New Year's stew. Let's see if she tells me. I, I don't know if she told me in the last book what the New Year's stew was about. I'm sure if we go back and listen. Okay, let's read what she says. Oh, that's right. New Year's Hoppin' John. So she says Southern New Year's stew. Inspired by the New Year's institution called Hop and John, this hearty stew combines black-eyed peas, rice, and collards for a stick-to-your-rib stew that makes a great one-dish meal. If fresh collards are unavailable, substitute another dark green such as kale or use frozen collards. You can also make this stew using leftover cooked rice. Just add it a few minutes before serving time to heat. And I'm telling you, the ingredient list on here is so fantastic. It's like 10 ingredients. Carrot, garlic, uh, celery onion, collard greens, brown rice, and then a few spices. So good. And potato. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Love me some stew. Thanks, Robin, for the stew. Soups and stew savvy chapter. Next is satisfying salads. So for the satisfying salads, now I know, and I, I make this joke all the time, but people love to say that vegans only eat salad. And the fact is that's not true. Uh, if there you need any evidence, listen to any episode of this podcast podcast. But the other thing is we also love salads. We love salads. We like to get our vegetables in. We like to do it in salad form. So, I mean, it's not that we hate salads. We love them. We just, uh, you know, we don't like it when people say it's the only thing that we eat. That's all, you know, because we eat a lot more than that. But let's take a look at this satisfying salads chapter, garden rotini and chickpea salad with inner goddess, inner goddess dressing curried vegetable salad, orange chipotle dressed salad with black bean salsa, roasted root vegetable salad with French lentils and walnuts, bean and barley salad with creamy Dijon dressing. These are all very like inventive, like sounds so yummy and inventive, like not just a basic like Caesar salad, romaine and tomatoes, pasta slaw, roasted sweet potato salad with cashews and kidney beans, nacho taco salad here for that, red bean and corn salad, tabbouleh chickpea salad, Thai style pineapple rice salad, uh, tempeh lettuce cups, peanut noodle salad, and Korean cabbage salad with tofu. Can we please just check out the nacho taco salad? I'm just so curious to hear. If you're looking for a salad that's economical, fun to eat, and a big hit with older children and teenagers, this is it. All right, we got black beans, pinto beans, salsa, chili powder, cheese sauce from the book, tortilla chips, Shredded iceberg lettuce, uh, tomatoes, and optional toppings. You need black olives, green chilies, uh, chipamole. We know what that is now. Uh, so it looks like we're making the beans. Use a fork to mash a portion of the beans. Cover over medium heat. Da, 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 da. Small amount heat the cheesy sauce. I wonder what's in that cheesy sauce. Let's go back and look at that. Yeah, so it's basically like, I mean... I don't think it's a taco salad. Oh, because you have the... Okay, so it's like nachos over salad, essentially. 
I'm here for it. Let's go back and look at that cheesy sauce. Let's see what's in it, shall we? So this is page 36 in the basics chapter. We got nutritional yeast, cornstarch, garlic, soy milk, garlic powder, soy milk, salt, olive oil, fresh lemon juice, cider, and yellow mustard. I mean, this is pretty, it's a standard cheese sauce recipe. So I love that. Again, we're getting to the nitty gritty here. Basics, um, and tofu feta right next to it, which is just uh, tofu, olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, salt, and oregano. Mm, I love a tofu feta. So good. All right, that's salads. I'm going to pass the salads because, you know, a salad's a salad. I'm excited by it, though. The, in particular, in the beginning, that garden rotini and chickpea salad with inner goddess dressing, curried vegetable salad, orange chipotle dressed salad with black bean salsa, and the roasted root vegetable salad with French lentils and walnuts. Oh, that sounds so yummy. Sounds so good. Okay, next one is noodle know-how. That perks me up a little more. Come on, noodle know-how. Noodle know-how. We've got linguine with variations on, on a pesto. Oh, some pesto uh, variations. Blushing Alfredo fettuccine. Rotini with spicy vegetable ragu. Spaghetti marinara with wheat balls. Uh, ziti with green olives, white beans, and oven-dried tomatoes. Linguine with lentils and roasted butternut squash. Oh, my God. That sounds good. Farfalle with white beans and cabbage. Orzo pilaf with tofu feta, penne and broccoli with tomatoes, walnuts, and raisins, fusilli with potatoes, green beans, and lemon, basil creme, walnut dusted fettuccine with caramelized vegetables, penne wise, peanutty pasta, quick lo mein, and dan dan style linguine. Okay, I'm going to go right towards the end because look at that quick lo mein and dan dan style linguine. Let's go look at those. Quick lo mein. It's $2 a serving by using leftover cooked spaghetti or that ultimate cheap food, the ramen noodle brick. You can get this meal on the table in 15 minutes or less for an even quicker meal and a great way to use bits of leftover veggies. Tossed in any cooked veggies you may have on hand, such as steamed broccoli or green beans in place of the cabbage. So I also love that too when books give you you know, ways to think outside of the box, to expand on the recipe they've put here for you. So you can try it the way it is, but then if you have like certain things on hand and you don't have everything the recipe calls for, for perhaps there's another way you can uh, get in there on it still. So this has the noodles, tofu, cornstarch, canola, uh, garlic, ginger, carrot, onion, cabbage, mushroom, soy sauce, rice vinegar, vinegar, ketchup, and toasted sesame. This looks so easy. All those things I have on hand right now, and it looks so easy because um, it literally looks like just the pasta and the tofu. Everything in one pot, it almost looks like even too. So good. And a quick lo mein. I love a lo mein. Now these Dan Dan style linguine noodles. This spicy recipe is inspired by the Szechuan noodle dish Dan Dan, traditionally made with ground pork and preserved vegetables. Because many types of Chinese noodles contain eggs, I use linguine instead. Both hot chili oil and crushed red pepper are used in this recipe. So if you don't like your food too spicy, you'll want to cut back on the amount of each that you use. I see. So she used the linguine to take place of the Dan Dan style noodle. That was smart. Um, and again, stuff you know, rice vinegar, hot chili oil. Though I don't have hot chili oil ever. I don't keep it in the house because I know I would love it. Like I would eat, I'd want to put it on everything. I'd be like, put that on my kale, put that on my broccoli, put that, I just want oil, oil, oil. Um, but all ingredients you know in this, and again, it, it looks like a one pot style recipe almost here, um, coming together in less than 30 minutes, $2 a serving, so good. All right, let's move on to skillet scents, okay? Skillet scents, we got Sunday supper frittata, Skillet hash, stovetop cheesy mac, skillet chili mac, salsa rice and red beans, curried red bean pilaf with walnuts and raisins, coconut curry rice, white bean and barley risotto with kale and tempeh, Moroccan chickpeas and couscous, polenta and pan seared uh, mushrooms and tomatoes, Indian spice lentil ragu, penny pinching pinto pic picadillo, savory sausage and peppers. Better than takeout tofu stir fry, tofu fried rice, walnut crusted tofu with spinach and orange. Barbecued black bean tofu burritos, Tropic of Tempeh, Mushu burritos, Smoky Tempeh with cabbage and potatoes. Oh my gosh. So many great things to make in a skillet. So wonderful. I want to check out the Mushu burritos. So we, when we were kids, my sister would always get the Mushu pork when we went out for Chinese food. Flour tortillas replace delicate Mushu pancakes in a non-traditional interpretation of the classic Chinese dish. 
Flavored with fragrant, sweet hoisin sauce, the delicious seitan and cabbage filling can be enjoyed over rice instead of rolled in the tortillas if you prefer. I get it. Since you were putting it on um, a mushu pancake, now you're putting it in a tortilla. Interesting. My sister loved these. I should I should send her this book and mark this recipe for her. It's a dollar fifty or less per serving. Literally, it's seitan, cabbage, carrots, hoisin sauce, green onion, water, toasted sesame, and flour tortillas. Can we get into that? It's going to be so good because of that hoisin sauce too. I love it so much. Um, what's another one from here? Savory sausage and peppers. Just check that guy out. Savory sausage and peppers. She says this recipe can be enjoyed in a number of ways. Cut the vegetables and sausage smaller to use as a sauce for pasta or leave the pieces larger to enjoy as a stew over rice or another grain. For a less saucy version, leave out the vegetable stock, tempeh, or seitan can be used instead of sausage if you prefer. So, okay, what I was curious about in this, I was like, does she buy sausage or does she use her own sausage? Because remember, this was 2009 it was written. Um, so she's got... Three close to mom's sausage links. That's a variation from the book, page 54 in here. Or she said you can use tempeh or seitan, which is great. So she gives you those options in here. That's lovely. So you can just buy it all and do it. Or you can make a little sausage on your own too, which is always fun to do. And I'm sure in this book, it's so super easy. Let's go take a look and see what's in those sausages. So that's page 54. So if you're going to make the sausages on your own, you've got wheat gluten, tapioca flour, a bunch of different spices. Um, some kidney beans, soy sauce, and olive oil. But I say different spices. It's all stuff you have. Maybe you'll have to get some fennel seeds. But beyond that, it's like onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, black pepper, or salt. I mean, I'm saying you have it. I don't know your life. Maybe you don't have it. But things that um, are can traditionally be found in a kitchen. Next chapter is first class bakes and casseroles. All right, so we got the Smoky Southwest Sweet Potato Shepherd's Pie, Comfort Loaf, Three Bean Loaf. So those are the two different loafs that I, uh, meat loafs I've made from here. Uh, tortilla Strata, Essence of Porcini Stuffed Dinner Mushrooms, Deconstructed Enchilada Bake. Curious. I'm curious about that. Uh, Mexican Rice and Bean Bake, Baked Ziti, Cacciatore Noodle Bake, Deluxe Vegetable Lasagna, Tempeh Bobo Tea. White beans and lemon potatoes with olives and tomatoes, savory vegetable cobbler, vegetable crisp, rice island casserole, spinach pie, torta rustica, and samosa pie. Okay, so the samosa pie is so cool. I looked it up earlier. It's the pie crust in here with basically like samosa filling. So like if you want a samosa, but you're like, I don't want to hand wrap a roll a bunch of samosas, you can make a pie. And you're getting the same thing, essentially, because you're getting that flaky pastry crust with the samosa filling in it. So yummy. So delicious. Uh, comfort loaf and three bean loaf. Those are the ones I've told you about the most. So let me look at this three bean loaf. I think it's got some oats in it here. Am I looking at the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got the comfort loaf or the three bean loaf. Let's see what she says about the comfort loaf. Meatloaf has long been synonymous with economical comfort food. The lo this loaf skips the meat, of course, and is loaded with comfort. Served with creamy mushroom gravy, which there's a recipe for in here, and accompanied with mashed potatoes and a green vegetable such as broccoli or green beans. Leftovers make great sandwiches. Listen, she's not wrong about this at all. I love this meatloaf recipe. And now that I'm looking at them both, it's the comfort loaf that I've made the most out of this book and it's got onions celery carrots garlic uh pinto beans extra firm tofu soy sauce tomato paste uh spicy brown mustard walnuts old-fashioned oats breadcrumbs wheat gluten flour so vital wheat gluten fresh parsley and then it's got basil thyme um salt and black pepper i just love it so much it's so easy to make and really it's it's that traditional meatloaf. So if you're looking for a traditional, it was so funny. My sister's been eating a lot more vegan food. And the other day she was like, do you have a meatloaf recipe? And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get this book for my sister. I've just said this now like four times. I said, actually, there's one I love in this one book. I'll have to get it to you. So I'm buying her this book when I get off the phone. Though I was thinking maybe that's where I lost my first copy. But she says she hasn't seen it. Hmm. The mystery continues. The mystery unfolds. Now, I wanted to look at this Rice Island casserole. That's 170. Let's see what's in here. Island flavors permeate this rice and bean bake with bits of pineapple and coconut, adding a surprise of sweetness and minced chili, adding heat. Serve with a cooked green vegetable on the side to complete the meal. So we got green chilies, onions, carrot, brown rice, a lot of spices. We got beans, pineapple. Oh, I love that. So I love that when we put green chilies and pineapple together, you get that sweet and that heat. Love, love, love. 
Um, some coconut in here too. Uh, unsweetened shredded coconut. Nice texture in there with that. Chopped cilantro and unsalted roasted cashews. This sounds like a fun recipe. Rice island casserole. Look at that. Something new I might try. All right. Next one is what I might say the reason I probably gravitated towards this book initially. Well, I know why initially. It was called Vegan on the Cheap. And I was like, I want vegan on the cheap. That's amazing. And this served me very well for, I mean, I had this book before I went to culinary school. This was where I learned a lot of the base of a lot of things. Um, and I remember making meals from this book specifically in an apartment that I had in Washington Heights. And when you first go vegan, I know this because I'm remembering it now, I should say, because my sister's in this phase. She's uh, been eating more plant-based. She's been eating all plant-based the last couple of weeks. And she's so excited to tell everyone, so excited to tell me what she's eating. And I remember this book specifically because I wanted to share everything with everyone that I made out of here. Um, it was it was just great. And I remember making things in my Washington Heights apartment in New York. I was working on a Broadway musical at the time. And I would go home, make something so easy from this book, bring it into the show, share it with people. Um, it was this book, Chloe's Kitchen by Chloe Coscarelli. And... Vegan Comfort Foods by Alicia Simpson. Um, she's been on the pod to talk about that book. The Vegan Comfort Foods book was my very first book. But those three books were sort of like my Bibles when I started. I loved them. Um, so this falls right in line with those. And I actually, I've probably talked about this before. With that group from Annie, we all started like having one night a month. We would do basically like a vegan Thanksgiving <laughs> Because back then it was, you were still con considered like very weird if you were like eating vegan food and, and we wanted to like share it with each other. There were probably like, I want to say there were like eight to 10 of us and we would have this big vegan potluck like once a month at someone's apartment. Um, and it was so much fun. And we did, we tried to do a lot of raw food. Like we all tried to push ourselves out of the box. So we were trying things we wouldn't normally try. Um, but it was so cool. Uh, it, it really kickstarted my journey into exploring cooking more and um, sharing it with people more. So shout out to that Annie crew from, uh, and it wasn't just Annie people. We all ended up inviting like other people from other shows. It was really cool. Anyway, we're on the pizza, burgers, and sandwiches chapter. We got better bean burgers, very veggie burgers, lemony garlic chickpea patties. Those sound yummy. Yum, yum. Cajun spice seitan po'boys, roasted vegetable sandwiches with creamy white bean spread, curried tofu wraps, smoky joes, wheat ball sandwiches, salsa tofu burritos, bean and cheesy rice burritos, build your own fajitas, pepperoni mushroom pizza, Tuscan white bean pizza, and polenta pizza with roasted vegetables. I mean, I don't even need to go to any of these specifically to... I, I, they just... They're exactly what they say they're going to be. You know what I mean? You got a bean burger, you got a veggie burger, a chickpea burger, a seitan po' boy, like just so straightforward and delicious and things that you want, you know? Um, bean and cheesy rice burrito. I'm just curious to see. So I'm going to guess it's beans and the cheesy sauce. So we got pinto beans, salsa, chili powder, mild chilies, hot cooked rice, hot cooked rice, uh, the cheesy sauce, flour tortillas, tomato, red onion, she says, when you need to stretch a small amount of rice into a satisfying meal for four, try these yummy burritos. If you have some cheesy sauce already made, these go together in a flash. She's not wrong. Next to that is a salsa tofu burrito. These quick and easy burritos are a great way to enjoy your tofu and burritos too. And that's tofu, nutritionally, soy sauce, hot sauce, uh, pepper, and salsa. So good. That's great. And these Smoky Joes. That is made with, uh, what are we using as the base? A seitan base. So, ooh, a sloppy joe with a seitan base. I love that. And these wheat balls. I love that she makes these wheat balls uh, in here in the basics chapter. And she uses them throughout the book because that's one of the things about meatballs, right? You make meatballs and then you're like, well, I've got leftovers. That's great. But now she gives you like different variations and ways to use them. So that's so good. All right. We're at slow cooker favorites. So, so easy vegetable soup, black bean soup with kale and rice, Moroccan inspired lentil soup, curried yellow split pea soup, three spicy sisters, three spicy sisters stew. We're going to check that out. Positively pantry chili, smoky red bean chili with chipotle cornbread dumplings, seitan, oh, chipotle cornbread dumplings, come on, seitan and mushroom goulash, four grain polenta, tempeh pot a feu, 
Tabbouleh stuffed peppers, slow cooker seitan pot roast. I've made that pot roast. So yummy. Corn seitan and cabbage. Let's check out this three spicy sister stew. What makes it? Let's see what her story is here. If you heard the legend of three sisters, then you know that they considered corn, beans, and squash inseparable sisters that needed to be grown together in the same mounds to maximize their growth and sustainability. I see. Not only do these charming sisters grow well together, but they are also complementary when cooked together in recipes, such as this delicious stew. If you prefer the sisters without the spice, omit the chilies and cayenne. We're keeping that spice in there. We are keeping that spice in there. And then we've got, uh, I want to check out those Chipotle cornbread dumplings, 206. And I have to say, too, at the beginning of that three spice, it's Iroquois legend. I miss that word. If you've heard the Iroquois, Iroquois legend of the three sisters, then you know that they're considered corn, beans, and squash, ir inseparable sisters. Smoky red bean chili with chipotle cornbread dumplings. So in these dumplings, we've got cornmeal, flour, baking powder, soy milk, and the chili. So chilies and adobe sauce. Uh, that's what's given us. So basic dumplings with... Um, some chipotle and adobe sauce. I love that. Give me, give me more. Oh, I bet it's so easy to make. I love a good dumpling on top of your stew or your soup. So, so good. Seitan and mushroom goulash. Now, I just had Jenna Hamshaw on from the Vegan Week, and she had a goulash in her book, and it has potatoes. And I text my mom because my mom, and remember what I said about this book and thinking of things your mom would make? My mom made goulash all the time as a kid. And Jenna's rep recipe had potatoes in it, and my mom's always had pasta, so I was very confused. So now I'm, I'm curious to see what, the, but Jenna told me, she's like, no, no, it's made with pasta too. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know. This one though looks as though it is made with potatoes, I think, or maybe neither, my gosh. She says, Hungarian goulash is a hearty stew traditionally made with beef and sauerkraut, made creamy with the addition of sour cream. In this version, I use seitan and mushrooms, which have a neutral affinity to the sauerkraut. Vegan sour cream adds a luscious, creamy texture to the sauce. Serve over cooked egg-free noodles. If egg-free vegan noodles aren't available, fettuccine noodles broken into thirds are a good alternative. It's $2 or less per serving. And I'll tell you, she doesn't have pasta or potatoes in this goulash. So I'm learning more about goulash. There's different variations uh, to go off of here as time goes on. Time marches on. I'm making up a song. Sweet delights. We're on the final chapter. And of course, as we know, my favorite. I love a good sweet. We got gold bar cookies, sesame shortbread cookies, chocolate oatmeal, peanut butter cookies, chocolate cupcakes with peanut butter frosting, Italian polenta cake, chocolate surprise brownies. I wonder what the surprise is. Pumpkin spice cake with chocolate glaze, great northern apple cake, apple clifudi, fresh pear galette, Mixed fruit cobbler, chocolate blueberry crumble, tropical Betty. Who's Betty? Why is she tropical? Chocolate cherry bread pudding, tiramisu bread pudding, chocolate chip walnut rice pudding, and caramel baked apples and vegan whipped cream. Now we got some questions here. We got to figure out who Betty is. So tropical Betty is 234. You might know if you're listening to this. She says this old fashioned dessert known as a Betty differs from a crisp in its use of breadcrumbs. It's typically made with apples, but I like to mix it up with what's on hand. In this version, Betty goes tropical with ripe bananas, canned pineapple, and coconut, although you could add other tropical fruit if you have some on hand. Like most desserts of this type, it tastes best served warm topped with vegan vanilla ice cream. Okay. So it seems like um, a Betty is a type of um, crisp, only with uh, breadcrumbs, it seems. I'm seeing breadcrumbs, brown sugar, margarine. Yeah, I think it's the breadcrumbs. Yeah, there's four cups in here. My goodness. All right. So that's a tropical Betty. I'll have to look more into that, though. Now we've got the chocolate surprise brownies. Let's find out what the surprise is, shall we? I like the idea of using inexpensive and healthy ingredients in dessert recipes. So I was intrigued by the numerous brownie recipes floating, floating around on the internet that call for black beans. That is very intriguing still to this day. After experimenting a bit, I've come up with my own version that contains not only black beans, but other surprises, including coffee and fruit. Wow, I bet they're good with that coffee in there. Perhaps the biggest surprise of all is that these rich chocolatey brownies have wonderful flavor and are easy to make. They're 50 cents uh, or less per serving. So it's got black beans, 
sugar, cocoa powder, banana, instant coffee, vanilla, flour, baking powder, and some semi-sweet chocolate chips. And walnut pieces are optional. Um, so that's the surprise. And there's this Italian polenta cake. I, I want to make a polenta cake. I've never made one. Hmm. It says polenta, the darling of the Italian pro pro Povero cooking shows its versatility in this delicious moist cake. Many versions of this lovely golden cake exist throughout Italy. Some include almonds. Others are grated orange zest and raisins. This version includes all three, but the raisins are optional. I love that. Oh, I want to make a polenta cake. Well, that is Vegan on the Cheap by Robin Robertson. Uh, this book is a must for anyone just starting out in the vegan world, mainly because she covers all of the items you won't be able to have or you think you're not going to be able to have when you go vegan, right? She covers the burgers, the mac and cheese, the pizza. It has served me well also on a, oh, what the heck am I going to make tonight kind of way, right? Like it's a book where I can pull it off the shelf, find a recipe in it, and I usually have the ingredients that are called for in my pantry already. So it makes that, it makes it efficient and cost effective in that sense as well. So even as a longtime vegan, it's something that I love, love, love having around. Um, it's just another stroke of genius from Robin Robertson. Uh, so there's no reason not to get a copy and uh, have it at the ready when you want to make some comforting, familiar, inexpensive food or don't know what to make and just want to flip it open and take it for a spin. Um, I already shouted out many things I could really make tonight, but I got other recipes I got to get to. My goodness. Um I do want to know, it's a no pictures book, everybody. So, but I think it's like 10 bucks. And it really is just like having recipe cards from like a family recipe box in your home. It truly, truly is. So I highly recommend it. Um, but no pictures, wanted to be upfront about that. And you can learn more about Robin and get more of her recipes at robinrobertson.com. And on Instagram, you can find her there at Vegan Without Borders. And of course, you can follow me at The Vegan Roadie on Instagram. We'll see you next week for a brand new episode. For now, keep on cooking. And hey, remember, it's nice to be nice. This has been a Muzzy Cat production. <laughs>